Well, hello there, happy innovators. How are you guys doing today? How is your week going, huh? How's it going? How are you doing? You getting things done? Are you behaving or are you misbehaving? I know it's been a while since I've done a Singularity podcast, and I apologize for that. Um, you know what? I just couldn't think of anything that I really wanted to talk about. And, uh, you know, today it was kind of the same thing. I really couldn't think of a specific topic that I wanted to talk about. But I put my mind to it, and uh, it didn't take me very long. I came up with a couple of things I think that I could throw out there and kind of you know, see how people respond. I guess where I want to start today is um, I want to talk a little bit about that video that I just released for the War Drums of Peace because uh, there's been a couple of questions that I've gotten about that video and uh, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things about that particular video. Now, as you may or may not know, I mean, I'm sure by now, if you're listening to my podcast or if you have been for any length of time, you know that I am in the throes right now of writing new material and I've actually started to kind of start to release new material too, which was not my original plan. But I want to talk about it today because um, it ties into that video that I just released, obviously. And uh, there's a bit of a story behind uh, this strategy, I guess you could call it, for uh, recording and releasing my new material. I mean, in the past, you know, it's been a very kind of uh, like linear process, you know. Uh, I write a bunch of songs, uh, maybe 20 songs, and some of them may be... Uh, older songs that I decided to revisit or something like that uh, like with the Escons album that I released back in 2017 um, you know some of those songs were brand new some of them were older and had been kicking around a while and some of them were just songs that I decided I wanted to revisit right and uh, you know I picked the best songs out of the bunch and I call it an album and that's how I've always done it but this time around, um, I decided, okay, that I wanted to be a little more creative and a little more artistic, for lack of a better word, with the new songs that I was working on, okay? I felt with the Escons album, although it's pretty good, um... In hindsight, I, I still find it kind of lacking. There's a couple things about that particular album that disappointed me, you know, um, years out now, like years later, listening to it now. Um, and it's not a bad album. It's just, I felt that my songwriting had become a little too mechanical. Like, um... I wasn't, I wasn't branching out enough or kind of like stretching out enough uh, intellectually and creatively with the songs. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's all in my head or something. You know, maybe I'm wrong. But it's just the way that I felt. So I knew going into this new bunch of songs I'm working on, um, you know, I wanted to approach it differently. And... You know, just over the course of the past, I don't know, I guess it's been about a year now since I started to write, you know, uh, you know, new songs come along, new ideas emerge, and, you know, I started to formulate my plan for how I wanted to release the songs, and, you know, this song will be first, this song will probably be second, you know, those kinds of things, right? And, um, what's funny is that's not what wound up happening, uh, because what started to happen was, and this has happened before in the past with my songwriting process, um, I started to write like two different styles of songs, basically. You know, it's like with, with Pipe Choir and PC3, the music tends to be a little more ambient, a little more chilled out, probably a little more positive, 
like in the themes and stuff like that. But there's always been this other part of me that, you know, enjoys music that's heavy. Like, you know, I grew up listening to heavy metal, you know, and I I was a drummer, obviously, uh, as you probably know by now. And, you know, I was hired out a lot for bands that were heavy and stuff like that. That was like the, it was what I was known for, you know, was what I was good for. You know, um, so there's always been this part of me that likes the really heavy music, not so much like death metal and black metal and all that stuff. I mean, a lot of that stuff, most of the time sounds, you know, it all sounds the same to me, you know, but, uh, you know, there's been a handful of bands like Filter and, uh, Rob Zombie, you know, White Zombie thought they were fantastic. Rob Zombie is one of the only musicians that I can think of that really got the idea that, you know, when a song is heavy, it's not necessarily fast. You know, it's it's about the drums, you know, it's about the beat. And Rob Zombie, you know, <laughs> is like a master at coming up with drum beats and guitar riffs that are sometimes very slow and just really heavy, you know? Um, and I could go on and on about the different heavier bands that I like. Um, I won't though, but the, the point I'm making is that, you know, there's a real part of me that enjoys that adrenaline kind of thing. And, uh, you know, just recently, my wife was telling me about this concept. I guess she got it from Brian Eno, which is hilarious, but um, good for her, you know, listening to him talk. You know, <laughs> she's not even a musician and she, you know, listens to this guy talk and he's just so brilliant, you know, a lot of the time. And he was talking about these things called the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system and that different styles of music appeal to your parasympathetic nerves and other kinds of music appeal to your sympathetic nerves. Okay. Now I'm not sure I might be getting this backwards, but I think that the parasympathetic nervous system is like, um, satisfied by, you know, chilled out music, ambient music, calming, relaxing music and the sympathetic nerves are satisfied by music that, you know, has a beat, it gets you up and running and maybe dancing and, you know, it has energy to it, right? Like these two different paths that you can take, uh, you know, while listening to music or choosing to listen to certain kinds of music. And it just so happens that, you know, I am generating, right? Uh, some music that will satisfy the sympathetic nervous system, you know, the heavier stuff that I do and I love to do. And I make this other kind of music that's, you know, appealing to the parasympathetic nervous system, right? Now, like, I guess I never had a problem, um, you know, making different kinds of music. Like, I was never concerned about genre or anything like that, like being classified as, you know, an ambient band only or a hard rock band only, you know, I wanted to be able to do whatever I want to do. So sometimes, right, I want to make music that's heavy. Sometimes I want to make music that's chilled out and ambient, right? And every once in a while, I'll make some kind of music that's like, you know, maybe a little bit too heavy, you know, at least I feel that it is. And that's the case. That's what happened uh, a few years back when I was releasing the PC one division album. Okay. It was like a, a body of work that I had made. I was happy with, it was probably a little bit heavier than pipe choir. It wasn't really like, in my opinion, it wasn't really appropriate to 
release it under the moniker of pipe choir it was just a little too heavy a little too different so i decided to come up with this idea of pc1 which was a name that i would release music under that was different from pipe choir you know maybe it was acoustic based only or it was really heavy or something like that you know i released the wilderness album under pc1 i released the division album under pc1 and uh i was always really happy with that idea you know of kind of having a separate avenue right now a while back i did an interview with this one dude and he was asking me you know about this idea of like why do you have pipe choir and pc1 and pc3 like why don't you just have it all under one name you know and that was a good question okay but trust me there's rhyme and reason to how and why i do certain things especially releasing music under a different name and it was you know obviously because i wanted them to be separate right to different styles but with this new material that I'm working on, okay, I'm kind of abandoning that a little bit. Like now, I guess I kind of feel, okay, I guess I kind of feel that now that you, my audience, have heard the difference between PC3, PC1, and Pipe Choir, you can kind of hear the difference, right? You know, you're familiar, right, with the different styles of music that I make now would probably be a good time or would be interesting to pull all of that stuff into pipe choir now i guess that's that was my thinking right that was my my vision right like now that i've established these other sounds that i make and you are familiar with them when i make a pipe choir song you know featuring pc3 you kind of get the idea that it's like going to be probably ambient and chilled out and really, you know, calm, right? But it'll still have a little bit of an edge because there's the pipe choir thing, you know, the song, the song is there. But, you know, uh, performed and recorded in a very different way. And then, of course, on the other hand, you know, you might have... Uh, the PC1 acoustic kind of sound, right? Um, intermingling now with pipe choir. So that's kind of my vision. I don't know if it's too confusing the way I'm explaining it. It probably is. But that was my vision um, after having recorded a, some new material and I started to accumulate a nice little pile of songs. You know, I realized, okay, some of these songs are really heavy, and I like that. And some of these new songs are really kind of just normal, just normal songs, right? So, you know, I'm thinking to myself, do I make like, you know, like a trilogy, you know, album trilogy or something, and have a soft song, then a heavy song, and then another heavy song and a soft song, you know? Or do I take the heavy songs and put them on one album and then take the songs that are just normal or chilled out and put those over on another album and ultimately that's what I've decided to do okay now, it took me a while to get here in this conversation so I apologize I haven't thought this out I haven't written anything out I'm just talking so I might be a little scattershot but bear with me right so now I'm in the situation where I have a nice little pile of heavy songs, a nice little pile of just normal songs, and what I'm going to do, I think, at this point anyway, is release a heavy album and a chilled out album, both pipe choir, but if you've been watching my YouTube channel, okay, or if you listen to me on SoundCloud, or any of the other you know, Spotify or whatever, you probably noticed that I'm releasing a song like Here Comes the Sun, and then immediately after that, you get the War Drums of Peace, right? So 
those are the opening songs. Like those are the first songs that I'm releasing of my newer material. I'm kicking it off. I'm not going to wait and, um, you know, make cover art right away and have all the songs nice and tidy and finished a body of work with an album cover and all that stuff. I'm not going to do that this time. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on a heavy song and I'm going to finish it. And then I'm going to work on a chilled out normal song and then I'll release that. You follow me? You get it? So in the year 2020, as far as I know right now, okay, there will be probably by the end of 2020, there will be two completed pipe choir albums, but each one will be very different from the other. Okay. So in case you were confused a little bit by, you know, here comes the sun followed up by the war drums of peace, you know, two totally different (laughs) styles of music. Don't worry. Um, You'll see in the end how it all works out. But in the meantime, you know, I will be trying to release new music as soon as it's done. Like as soon as the next song is done, you'll get it. And I've also decided that I'm going to shoot videos for every single song I release. Okay. So um, there you go. That's my plan for the future. Now, uh, so like I said, you got the Here Comes the Sun video and I released the War Drums of Peace. Now, in the War Drums of Peace video, I'm wearing this thing on my head, right? And I knew when I was releasing the video that it was probably going to be misunderstood and I was going to have to explain myself at least a little bit, okay, with this video. Now, it looks like I'm wearing like this, this like halo on my head, okay? It's not a halo, okay? Um, I'm certainly not a saint. It's, it is a antenna, okay? That was my vision or my idea. And it was kind of funny because that all came about by accident, okay? Like when you watch the video, at least I think it was a pretty intense video. Like I thought it came out much better than I had hoped it might. But the funny thing is, is that I kind of stumbled into that whole thing. You know, um, what do I mean? Well, I'll explain it to you. You know, I was shooting the video for the War Drums of Peace and I had this whole like costume thing that I had made years ago. Okay, and I had decided I wanted to wear it in this video, right? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll grab that old thing that's, you know, collecting dust, you know, just sitting there and I'll wear it and it'll be in the video. Well, I started to do some tests for the video, like screen tests, and uh, it turns out like this this collar kind of thing that I had made um, had this little like antenna thing sticking out of it okay and the original plan was for me to be wearing this collar in the video with this antenna thing sticking out of it and that would be the costume but I shot a couple tests and and, you know I didn't really think it turned out that great I was a little disappointed so out of frustration I just grabbed this antenna thing that I had sticking out of that collar I just yanked it out And I just put it on my head and I started to film like another take, okay? But with this antenna thing on my head, just kind of, you know, what if, you know, I ask myself that a lot. What if I just do this and I wear this and what if, right? Um, I'm just like anything goes, like I'm open to anything. So I grab this thing, I stick it on my head, I start filming and... Later on, I go back and I look at what I did and I start to kind of play around with it a little bit, you know, putting some effects on it or whatever. Um, Usually effects that I like normally never use. Like I like to do that, you know, like I like to go down the path I normally never go down just to kind of see what might happen. And sure enough, man, I just kind of stumbled onto this thing, 
you know? And I was like, whoa, 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 this looks pretty cool. It is pretty cool. This antenna thing on my head. But I knew, even while I was editing the final video, you know, I knew that uh, there were going to be people who were going to ask questions about it. I just knew it. And, you know, one of the questions was like, is this some kind of like, you know, ancient sun god costume or something? Like, no, not an ancient sun god costume. It's just a happy accident. Like, that's exactly what it was. Like, that happens sometimes. I'm sure it happens for you. If you're a creative person, if you're creating things, making things on a regular basis, that kind of stuff just happens. You know, you you take a left turn, you know, like out of the blue. Maybe you're using your Brian Eno oblique strategy cards, right? Or something like that. You grab a card. You, you know, come up with a different approach to what you're working on. You know? That happens a lot for me. And uh, I'm open to that when I'm working on new things, especially with this new music. So let me tell you, I really, I don't know. I guess it may not sound like it to you guys, right? But to me, it's like I'm really trying to, I don't know, be a little more abstract in my approach to things, you know? And uh, so the War Drums of Peace video by Pipe Choir. You can see it on my YouTube channel if you're curious, you know. Um, This video that's kind of got people asking questions, you know. Um, It's a pretty intense video, at least in my opinion. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. I thought it came out pretty good. The song sounds pretty good. I'm happy with it. And that song was so old, you know. It was like from 2010. It was a song I had written for the Marion Circle Drum Brigade. And uh, just recently I had the opportunity to call up that session again in my system and just kind of listen to what it was and, you know, okay, what if I add this? What if I add a guitar? What if I do this or that? You see, the what if. Um, It's huge, you know, it's a huge aspect of the creative process, at least in my studio, you know, when I'm working on something. I don't know how you are, but maybe your process is different, you know, but for me, there's that question, you know, I ask myself all the time, like, you know, what if I replace the snare drum with toms, you know, right? What does that sound like? Well, the war drums of peace is a result of that what if question, you know, and, um, A lot of my new material is kind of along the same lines, you know, it's being made in the same way, you know, it's coming from the same place. It's a pretty fun process for me. It's pretty fun to be, you know, bouncing back and forth between songs that are really chilled and kind of like pretty and nice, maybe emotional, you know, and uh, songs that are a little more aggressive and, you know, kind of tapping into my roots a little bit of, uh, you know, of the uh, music that I grew up listening to and enjoying and the music I still listen to and enjoy, you know, because I do, like I said, I like a lot of heavier music. Um, So that whole idea, you know, of what if, it's a great way to, at least for me anyway, to kind of stretch out my mind and try to get a little more creative hopefully when you listen to my new material you'll be able to hear that you know maybe not and that's okay but uh i hear it (laughs) i guess that's all that matters at this point um but stay tuned because i'm going to be releasing a lot of new material and uh you know my original plan when i first started to make the bot videos when i came up with that idea Okay, what I wanted to do was start with the Pipe Choir debut album, right? And make a video for like four songs off of that CD. Okay, so I made a video for Lights Up. I made a video for Metal. I made a video for Sansis FM. And I made a video for Dream On. Four songs from my debut album. 
and then I would go to the PC One Division album and I would pick four songs off of that album and make a video for them. So that's where I'm at right now chronologically with my videos, right? So I'm going back into the sessions for the Division album. I picked four songs out and um, I'm kind of, you know, I guess revisiting them. I'm, you know, punching them up a little bit with some of the newer stuff I, I have and the newer tools I have. And, you know, it was 10 years ago. So a lot's changed in 10 years for me, um, production wise, you know, my capabilities. So sure, I can hear all the things I would change immediately, you know, all the things I can do to make it sound maybe just a little bit better. So, you know, here I am. Uh, remixing four of these songs from the Division album. And you know, I get the idea. You know what? I'm taking the time to, to work on these songs. What if I include them? You know, what if I... <laughs> what if I include them in the new album? You know, they're songs that I'm proud of. They're songs that I think are strong. Um, they sound better with the new technology I have, you know, I'm able to make them better. Uh, I think my voice is maybe a little bit better. You know, like I said, it's been like 10 years, you know, an additional 10 years of singing songs. Um, so that's when I was like, you know what? That's a great idea. I can do whatever I want. You know what I mean? See, that's one of the best things about being an independent artist. You know, I don't answer creatively to anyone. I can do whatever I want. And I've always kind of felt anyway that it was kind of silly for like an artist to have a song that's really great. And, you know, they record it once and maybe they'll do a live version or something. But that that's it. You know, for the most part, that's it. They they never go back to it. And I always thought, what would it sound like if, you know, an artist who released a song Like, let's just say, for instance, Tom Petty, you know, he had that song Refugee or uh, American Girl, Um, any of those songs from way back in the day. It's like, what would it have sounded like if he had, you know, reinterpreted that song, you know, Refugee in a modern studio, you know, when, when he was older and he had more experience, would the song sound different? You know, and what's wrong with that, right? What's wrong with playing around with, you know, the songs that you've already written and the songs that are already established? You know, I think as an artist, you should have the freedom to go and, you know, grab a song that's 10 or 15 years old and why not, you know, mix it in with the new stuff, right? And um, I just never understood why... uh, you know, record labels in the past haven't capitalized on that, you know, and encouraged their artists to go back and revisit ideas, you know. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a hit. It could be the song that wasn't a hit on the album. So that's where I'm at. I mean, I've always felt that way, you know. Um, in fact, some of the bands that I've drummed in in the past kind of took my advice about that, you know, like, hey, let's go back and redo that song that we did, you know, five years ago. Let's go back in the studio and redo it and then include that on the new album. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, in my opinion. So um, with the new Pipe Choir albums that I'm going to be releasing, the new music I'm going to be releasing... Um, there's going to be some revisits, you know, there's a couple of songs I have, you know, particularly from the Division album, but not just from the Division album, you know, um, that I think I could probably do a little bit better. And, you know, um, I'm also going to, once I finish this video process for the Division album, you know, the four songs that I'm going to revisit, um, the plan was anyway to go and uh, do four videos from the Escon's album. So I'm not exactly sure what four songs I would choose, 
I would imagine Through the Storm would probably be one. I think Mona Sheen would probably be one. Um, maybe Ignite to Light. Um, I don't know. It's probably neither here nor there to you, but some of you uh, are familiar with that album, I'm sure. And uh, I would be happy to take your suggestions. You know, if there's a song from uh, Escon's that you'd like to see a video for, you know, four of the songs from that album are going to be made into videos one way or another, you know. Um, So, uh, yeah, that's it. I talked about music all day today. It's kind of weird. I'm not used to doing that, but um, I am in the middle of doing all this right now you know it's all happening right now um got another video in the can i'm working on another one another song you know one chilled out song one heavy song and uh, i'm just gonna keep as far as i know anyway right now i'm gonna keep doing that uh until the until i have a nice solid album each style of music you know um because pipe choir can be whatever i want it to be you know, and I'm an independent artist. I'm free. You know, I can, I can do whatever I want. And uh, isn't that cool? I think it is. You know. So anyway, folks, probably not one of the best singularity podcasts I've ever done. But hey, you know, it is what it is. I go into this thing sometimes with no script, no plan. And this is what you get get the real me this is it so uh anyway folks with that this is mike bostwick from pipe choir records signing off and remember folks if you want to keep what you've got you've got to give it away take it easy Okay, all you happy innovators who remembered that I had decided to start putting some music at the end of my Singularity podcasts, well, congratulations to you if you're still hanging around and you're hearing this. Um, The song that I selected for the end of this podcast is a song I did back in like 2013 or 2014. It's a song called It Feels Good to Feel Good Again. Uh, it's a track that I'm particularly happy with. Um, I was when I did it originally, and uh, all these years later when I listen to it, it still sounds pretty good. And this morning, you know, my wife was walking around the house singing it. And, uh, you know, at that time I hadn't decided what song I was going to choose. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to grab It Feels Good to Feel Good Again, and I'm going to stick that in there. And it's a pretty long song, uh, PC3, you know, Honest Wave song. Um, Honest Wave being, uh, well, you know, I'm sure you found the definition by now. If not, go to any of my PC3 songs, and there should be a definition of Honest Wave music attached to it. Uh, Like the genre that I made up for this music that I was making. Um... But anyway, here it is uh, from 2014, I'll say, um, released on the album PC3 Ad Astra Volume 2. Um, it was track number four on that album. And uh, it was a song that I described in a previous podcast. So uh, if you're curious to hear the story of It Feels Good to Feel Good Again, I believe... Oh, you know what? I think it was in the PC3 Ad Astra Volume 2 description that I did. Man, probably a couple years ago now. Um, But anyway, here's the track. It feels good to feel good again. Have a good week, everybody, and uh, I'll see you next time. Take it easy.